Look at my hair. I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. Hello. My hair is actually greasy like this because I have my hair treatment in. And I will be washing it out when I get back from my yoga class. These elastics have been snapping so quick when I get into yoga. I don't know if it's like my brain expanding as I'm focusing, but it only snaps when I'm in my yoga class. So we have to triple up. I've been doing three of them rather than two of them for safety precautions. Third one, going in. Out. I have this that happens. My hair is not quite long enough yet to fit all the way back. So I'm securing them with these cute little butterfly clips. This is such a good blue for my light brown slash orange hair. Very complimentary. Complimentary? It's com it complements it very nicely. Cool. Hair. You do a little bit of this. Okay, now I'm ready to move on. 9 12 a.m. My yoga class is at 11 15. Today I used Pulsed by Michelle to get me out of bed. It's a good song. It's very upbeat. It makes you want to move your arms around. It makes you want to do exactly as they're doing, actually. Do one of these. Yeah. Can you feel my pulse too? Do, do. It's fun. It's a fun song. It makes you feel youthful again. I just gave myself a little pep talk, reminding myself to breathe, reminding myself that everything is good everything is okay a-okay and this is just a part of my transition phase let's get into this lemon juice i didn't want to have to cut another lemon but i suppose i will Welcome back to another video. My name is Casey. K -k 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 Casey. Good morning. I have been struggling with really high anxiety this week. So cheers to breathing deeply into your stomach. I'm just releasing tension and high nerves in my body. Yeah, I'm just trying to take it slow. Breathe. Cheers to giving yourself space and patience. And trusting the process. Anxiety is something I managed for a large part of my life since probably I was like, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, 9, maybe 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Probably since the beginning of time. I don't recall. But I do know this is something I struggle with today. And it hasn't been so bad. It hasn't been this bad in a while. I um, definitely think I manage it. We fix the camera. We fix the camera again. So cheers to that. Cheers to not being so hard on yourself. Let me do a little extra swirl. Cheers. Delicious. 
Okay, I have over 30 minutes until my bus comes, so let's talk a little bit about my anxiety and anxiety period and what it looks like when it is trying to bring a girl down, trying to drag me down. I'm too strong. I stand up too strong. And it might take a couple hits. It might punch me with a combo, uppercut, drop kick me a couple few times, but it doesn't bring me down, down. It just shakes me up a little bit. So lately, what I've been feeling is the need for speed. I've been feeling like everything needs to happen very quickly, kind of not wanting to be seen. Seen as in like for who I am in the reality. I think I've been second guessing myself a lot. When my anxiety heightens, OCD things occur too. And I experience OCD a lot in my verbal expression, but I like will hesitate, do something one more time, and then go for it. Like, just like, like just how I did with the lemon juice. I did a one more swirl. Was that swirl truly necessary? No, it was me trying to control the space. But it's okay. Um, I think my light just blinked. I had a vision or a dream or something that my ring light was gonna shut out. What is that? Is that my ring light or is that this light? Okay, anyways, keeping my eyes peeled. I'm gonna figure out which light it is. I'm staring right at my ring light. I think the winter and having to be inside all the time and feeling trapped within my apartment and like within my small space isn't helping. It just gives me more of a like claustrophobic type of feeling or of like being stuck. I'm not stuck at all. I've actually upgraded very heavy, but my brain is seeing that there's little to no movement in my physical surroundings that it's convincing itself that I'm stuck. I'm not stuck. What else do I experience with my anxiety? I don't really, I think I'm just inventing. When I'm like filming and talking to the camera, I find that I'm kind of rushing and not giving myself space. There's this video of me, it's the first talking to a camera video where I'm in the blue jacket and it's literally is just me having my morning and talking to you and I feel very mellow. I think of that video a lot because my like demeanor and my tone was so calm. I wasn't rushing the words to come out of my mouth. I was taking it so easy. When I think about that video, I think of authenticity. I feel so honest in that video. And even though I was talking about, I don't remember. I don't remember what I was talking about at this time. I know it was just like random thoughts that came to my mind. It is a good signifier of who I am. That video is very much Casey. And not to say that I'm not me in all my videos. I feel that I am a part of me. I am a version of me. And all of us are very complex who carry multiple sides. And there is a version of us that comes out no matter who we're talking to and what we're doing. There's going to be a different side of us that comes out. And it doesn't make us any less of ourselves. But... So I've been working a lot on removing fear and worry from my body once again. I try to practice that daily, but I will say that this past week I've fallen off on like my energy work in terms of outside of yoga. Like when I'm at home, I haven't been doing my Reiki and like deep breathing. There's just little habits that I've really grown accustomed to that I've kind of fallen off. I've been taking naps, which is great, and my body is like calling for it, which is awesome, and I'm like honoring that. But in the past, when I was gonna take a nap, I would lead into the nap with deep breathing and I guess it doesn't have to be perfect. I am learning how to allow myself to fall off of my routine that keeps me sharp and ready without feeling like a sack of potatoes. I'm not a sack of potatoes. I shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond and um whatever thank you guys for always thank you guys for being here because it really shows me that there are people who want to hear me and create a community with me and it makes me emotional to even think about it because i've kind of always wanted a community that supports me even when i feel like i'm just being foolish and doing nothing but being me in that moment to be like actually liked for who i am it feels kind of sad to say that out loud but that is exactly what it is i just want to be liked for who i am and not something like unconditional love rather than having to give in order to be adored so thank you this helps me a lot in these anxiety moments because it reminds me that my people are out here and it reminds me that even if it's not in the proximity of like reaching my community and my people are out here and I've connected with people all around the world and I think that's so freaking cool. It really is so cool. Yeah, I don't really have much else to say, I think. Today I have work at 3. Today I thought also was going to be payday. It's not. I texted my boss and was like, hey, when do we get paid? Because I have a feeling it's going to be a random day like Tuesday or Wednesday because our schedule comes out on Wednesday. And that's so strange to me. Our work week starts on Wednesday. 
and it's so rare for me to work for a company like that but i do now and i'm pretty sure i'm gonna get paid on a random day in the middle of the week which can like work out i suppose i'm just trusting the process they have to trust the process i work at three and the thing is about this job is i am very likely to leave with cash tips it's also friday which is great and even though the cash tips not going to be more than like three dollars it could be like three five it can be like ten dollars but it's not a lot and then friday saturday i work i'm not sure about sunday because remember we are checking the schedule for sunday sunday we are checking the schedule and we are not assuming that we work because that always has me in a pickle yeah so my goal for today is to put less pressure on my timing trust the, the divine timing and breathe deeply try to be in the moment avoid being hard on myself and take my time and loosen up loosey goosey righty tighty lefty loosey turn it all the way to the left i hope you guys are doing well i hope your mood is great and i hope that you have some loved ones around you that you can kiss on the head and be like hey i love you so much and go up to them and kiss them on the top of their head friend parent cousin dog Yesterday I kissed Neon on the top of the head and it felt so nice. It's a lot of times he'll like move if he notices. He's really big on personal space and I get it. But I kissed him on the top of the head yesterday and he didn't, he was so down for it and it felt amazing. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. My other class was canceled. I feel like giving up on everything right now. Like, I feel very melancholic, but my yeah, class was canceled. I traveled far and wide for this. It's gonna be okay. I might have been, I may have been may may have currently still be this close to having a mental breakdown do you see the way it just extended by accident so it looks like i have more patience than i think i do yeah i might be extremely close to having a mental breakdown this week and uh throwing in the towel you know white flag surrendering but i i think i'm finally I, i'm at the point where i'm willing to um submit myself to the key I can't speak. I think I'm finally at the point where I'm willing to submit myself to the chaos that this week is. This week is so annoying. It's just so irritating. Um, I go downtown to go to my yoga class. My yoga class is canceled. I walk up there like a peaceful little yogi I am. Do you feel the peace exiting my body? It's oozing from me. And then I woke up, I'm like, oh, that's weird. It's dark. There's usually at least one person in here 10 to 15 minutes before the class. There was no one in there. So I was like, okay, I guarantee you it's canceled. But it's so weird because out of all the days, sure, the ice, the, the roads are kind of very sludgy and it's like that nasty, slippery, slidey sludge. Like even my apartment has cut out of old rug across the sidewalk so that you can use that as stepping stones so that you don't face plant so there are areas where it's really bad but I just find it so weird because yesterday or the day whatever day it was where it was frozen ice like it was an ice skating rink but things were open things were so open Every time I leave my house it's like a guessing game I don't know what to expect so much can be so much cannot be. I don't know. I took a shower when I got back. I felt so much better. I, I vented in there. If you've heard me talk about how much I love water as a purifier, it's such a great space to reset yourself. And that's exactly what happened. My work is open today. So I'm very grateful for that. So I'm going to be going into work in a couple hours. But everything is just so unpredictable right now. And it's not doing really well for my anxiety. I'm having an anxious time. I actually stopped at the cafe before my yoga class and I wrote what it feels, what anxiety feels like for me right now. And I wanted to share. So I'm just gonna share what I wrote down. I, this is my journal, my journal to go. I have many spaces that I like to write. This one is the one that I keep in my bag. I'm just gonna read it, I suppose. I'll just read you this, what I wrote. It's just a page. This thing right here, it's what I have. The winter season makes it easy to get into your own head. Less movement from your, your body, bringing you into your mind. It's easy to fall into spaces of restriction. Restriction, repetition, claustrophobic. Knowing the truth but fixating on the possibilities. Fixating on the what ifs. Freezing, downward spiral, rushing. Similar to a... 
Sometimes I can't read my own handwriting because I have really chicken scratch, especially when I write in lowercase. Like it's very scratch chicken scratchy. I've been told I write like a doctor. And sometimes when I refer back to my own words, I can't read it. And it's very humbling. I like have to tune into that like motherly instinct that knows what their baby's trying to say just because they're their mom. I have to do that for my own words. Sometimes I won't be able to read it, but I'm like, no, this is what I meant because I have that instinct. Anyways, rushing, similar to a cartoon with that one slipping sound slash jungle. The I'll, I'll try to find it and I'll put it here if I can find it. Hypervigilant, the job of an exclamation point. Anxiety feels just like what you use an exclamation point for. Club music slash EDM music. No one around, but all you feel is strong eyes watching. Your own eyes. Searching for answers when there's nothing to be answered. Swimming slash fighting in your dreams walking through quicksand swimming forward while someone holds the back of your legs or holds your ankles going against heavy winds walking through a hurricane being the soap that is being shed down in those asmr soap cutting videos which by the way i really want to uh make one i have fallen into a hole where i'm laying in bed at midnight and i come across a youtube recommended asmr soap cutting video and i don't click on it and I actually watch it without the sound. It's nice to see the shreds of the soap come down. Wearing snowshoes in the snow but still slipping. Double checking, frozen phone glitching. This is what anxiety feels like. That double checking when you know you are right triple checking that's what anxiety feels like to me i am starting to feel my energy come back together and it's really nice that i'll be able to get into work today my bus isn't coming all the way up to my neighborhood like it normally would like the typical bus stop those roads are actually closed so i have to walk further down it's hard for me to like explain if i without dosing myself so that was something else that i wasn't expecting this morning and then i caught last minute and i was able to catch my bus without having to wait an extra 30 minutes for the next one but it's it's good that i'll be able to get into work and i can and be around others and speak to others. I'm realizing that I'm shedding heavy weights and becoming more accustomed to a life and a lifestyle that I'm not used to, you know? And you have to shed old patterns and you have to release in order to receive, in order to welcome in new newness into you. At first glance, your mind wants to restrict. I'm not wanting to restrict, it's just uncomfortable. But it takes courage to be uncomfortable. It takes courage to open up and be honest about what you're feeling. So I'm very proud of myself. I am hopeful for this coming week. The weather is improving. I'm over the winter and it's just really is a matter of that. I'm just not a polar bear. I'm not a polar bear. I'm more so like a gummy bear. More so like a gummy bear. I might have had a testing week, but it definitely could have been worse and it wasn't. So. Thank you for that. I've also been able to sleep so much. So again, thank you for that. Catching up on sleep. I've been on my hibernation shit like a polar bear, but I'm not a polar bear. I'm a gummy bear. Gummy bears still hibernate. They hibernate in that bag that you just bought. Gummy bears to snack on. It's an interesting time for me right now, and I'm trying to be, I'm trying to see the bright side of things. The thing is, I am typically very good at seeing the silver lining. When my nervous system is heightened, it, my anxiety is really high, it gets difficult for me to uh, be there for myself. I'm returning, we are returning. Okay, I just changed and I, I just changed and I feel much more comfortable. I have my purple headband on, um, just a black shirt, black long sleeve, pants by AYM, some leg warmers. And then my boots. These are the only boots I trust in the snow, which is so interesting because they're foam. They're like, not, they're not really built for that, I I think. I mean, they're from UGG and UGG is like winter gear, but I don't think, I don't know, they've been working for it, so I'm not going to, I'm not gonna judge it. I feel much more comfortable. I love this headband. I didn't want to wear my hair in those pigtails. As my hair gets longer, I don't know, that hairstyle is just, I'm really overgrown. I've outgrown that hairstyle so hard. And it's always my go-to because it's easy and it's still cute and I don't really have to try. And when I have my hair in those pigtails, it's always secure and again, I don't have to second I don't have to question what's going on over here with those head with those pigtails. I'm not gonna be leaving for like another 30 minutes, but that's what I'm up to. And I'm just gonna have my jacket and a puffer on because it is very cold outside.
I'm I'm back home from work. I have this silk. I have more silk. What's the difference between silk and satin? I can Google it. I'll Google that right now. You can both learn a fun fact. So satin is a bundle of fabrics. It can be made from silk, cotton, nylon, polyester, viscose, whatever that is, and rayon. And then silk is just cocoons of silkworms which i've watched a clip from mit they did a study on that on silkworms making the silk you know it's really cool to watch i'm doing laundry i also have dishes that i can't tell are done or not i don't know why i'm struggling to understand whether or not my dishwasher is done but work was cool i literally just juiced fruit for like less than four hours and then i came home i don't have fare money i don't have bus money so i've just been boarding each bus be like can you please, can I ride the bus for, for free? I'm, I'm just trying to get home. This one bus driver, she's such a hard ass. Like every time I, I've been in this situation before and it just so happened to be her too. She's always so like snobby and rude about it. Like I'm just trying to get home, it's nine o'clock. It's not nine o'clock, it was like seven. It was seven o'clock. And it's winter, we're in a winter snowstorm. We had this winter snowstorm not. I'm, I can't stop stuttering. This is another thing with my anxiety. I can't speak confidently. My words skip. I stutter a lot um, speaking to other people. I've been cab cabin fever. Apparently, I forgot what cabin fever fever. I forget that cabin fever is a thing, but that's exactly what I feel like. I feel like I've just been staying indoors for far too long. It's been like five days and I feel like I have cabin, cabin fever and I can't talk to people fluidly. I feel like this is worse than when the pandemic happened and we are stuck inside for months. I don't remember what I was talking about. Going into work and then coming home really did make such a difference in my mood. I came home, I put my laundry away, I did some cleaning, I swept my floors, I did dishes, I did laundry. It's really made a big difference. I think I'm so much more extroverted than I it Admit? I don't know I'm so confused but like I can't I guess it comes in waves because I do like being by myself a lot but I tend to get like I need the ability to go outdoor I need the ability to socialize if I want to like having that as an option I hate being tamed to these four walls however walls you want to count these I live in a 400 square foot studio you can do the math if you like I have a bathroom kitchen a studio space where my bed is but I feel so much better I want to put my clothes in a dryer really quick I also forgot that seasonal depression is a thing it's a alive it's well it's thriving and it's affecting many 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 people i feel like since i've grown a lot emotionally and i found many habits and practices that have helped me manage my mood i forget that i too feel depression the winter storm too is so unpredictable i just think i had such good momentum up into this winter storm and it put such like a halt on my like routine and such it slapped me in the face and i was not ready to fight I was cruising but I'm gonna make myself some rice eat some dinner and continue to do some cleaning or like picking up around the house because that was something else that was starting to creep up on me is the clutter and all of these symptoms I'm telling you all of these symptoms signifying pinpointing depressive episode depressive about feel you're depressed you're depressed and depressed uh seasonal depression anxiety but I've taken care I'm taking care of myself and I'm doing my best to acknowledge what I'm feeling and open up and actually feel it. I just have trouble like connecting with others when I'm feeling very anxious. So talking to my coworkers felt very bumpy and it's not like I was ignoring them or anything, but when I would try to like speak with them, it felt bumpy and I felt embarrassed talking to them because I didn't know what I was saying. It's like I hadn't spoken to a human and actually that's exactly what I was feeling. Like I feel like I haven't conversed with anybody in a good amount of time. My right hip keeps popping and I think it's because I fall asleep with my legs crisscross apples I commonly rest like that and I even had a dream about not doing that and for me to have my legs straight out and that's the proper way of laying but my hips are paying the price the proper description that I was looking for is awkward I've been feeling very awkward in my body in my mind and that's the best way to describe all that I am trying to say here convey here but well, we're doing just fine we're doing just fine i'm just in my head and if i am improving i'm getting a lot better thank you for bearing these moods that i've been in you are so cool and i love you so much okay this is the type of shit i'm on this is the type of shit i'm on i'm making rice i have this pot here i put all of this rice along with that rice inside of the pot as you can see just with this rice alone how much space is in this pot i made 
way too much rice it was just because the bag was ending and i wasn't just gonna keep a small amount of rice in the bag when i can just cook the rest you know my cheeks are also really red i don't know it's that time of the, of the day i know we thought this was gonna be a happy ending on this video but i so the water overflowed i'm burning i burnt this part of my stove I have to save this rice to cook after this rice is done. I just feel so disconnected from time. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing something. I'm doing something and it is burning my stove. It is also cooking so much rice. Just something to ponder on, just something to share. My cheeks are so red. I'm gonna take care of this rice catastrophe and move on. I'm feeling a little bit stressed about this rice situation because I can't just go messing up this pot of rice or the next pot of rice because it is the last of my groceries until I'm able to go buy more. That won't be anytime soon. I'm gonna figure it out. It's gonna come together. I just tried it. I feel like it's been cooking for like 30 minutes. I just tried it. The rice is still hard. I also don't typically use this front part of my stove to cook my rice because the like stove settings are strange. Look, you have like the typical one and then you have where it's worried about the layers. I know how to cook rice, so I don't, I'm struggling and I look a hot mess while I'm doing it. It's gonna come together. I'm a chef. This is what chefs do. They face a problem and they conquer, they tackle it and they adjust. I'm a chef. I'm not gonna lie. The rice situation just triggered a meltdown. I washed my face because for some reason when I get home from work or I get home at night, I don't know why. Air quality, I'm not sure. I get flushed if I don't take a shower immediately when I get home and I still am pretty flushed. But I washed my face and I just cried in the mirror. I'm working on the second batch of rice at this point. The good thing about my rice, it's now very soft and sticky. It's cooked so uneven. There's like hard pieces in there too. But I was gonna say that I really like sticky rice. I like when my rice is soft. So there is a perk about this. But I really just had an anxiety. It wasn't an anxiety attack. It was, I've had anxiety attacks before and that, it wasn't that. I just felt really overwhelmed that I had a meltdown. I don't even feel like, I don't even wanna eat. I've lost my appetite. I was looking forward to just eating white rice. I wanted something so simple. I just wanted to put rice in the pot pour some water over it, put it on the stove for like 15 to 20 minutes, have it be done and then sit down in my bed and eat some white rice. I also dropped a bunch of rice on the floor because I was cleaning up a little bit, doing some dishes. And as I, I don't know what happened, but I dropped the fork I was using to fluff the rice. And then I grabbed it, like I caught the fork, but it was hot. So I dropped it and then rice got all over my floor and I'm stepping on it. I just took my socks off and like my floor is all sticky and I just swept. It's You know what though? I needed to cry and honestly I could still use one because I kind of just like teared up. I didn't feel any tears fall. My eyes got watery and I was talking to myself in the mirror. But I need to cry. I haven't cried in a good amount of time it feels like. Crying relieves tension in the body and right now that's kind of what I'm feeling like. And I'm done blaming the little phase because this is not just little phase even though it has a big part of it and I am a lady. But I just put on my favorite night shirt. I'm gonna end the video here because I feel like a mess. Like an emotional wreck. Thank you for watching this video. It's been a it's been a roller coaster, hasn't it? It's been an adventure. It's been it's been something. I do want to point out that there are some of you who watch my videos every day. This is part of your day. And I just want to mention that means so much to me. I've really accumulated a small community that I feel very welcome in. And I have chills talking about it. Like I feel, also I feel the need and the desire to cry. When I think about all the mishaps that are going on in my week, I am so quick to remember that I have this community that I feel like came so fast and it's only a hundred of you, but it really means a lot. It warms my heart knowing that you welcome me in with whatever I have to share for the day. It means a lot. It really does make a difference in my experience. Yes, 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 yes. I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. My name is Casey. Thank you for watching this video. If this is your first time watching. Well, this is a part of the journey. This is a part of who I am. Good night. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a brand new day. It's a fresh new start. I can't go to yoga, question mark. Maybe I'm going to try to finesse it. I don't even know if it's worth trying though because I can just imagine what I'll feel if if I get down there and the yoga class is canceled, I don't even know what I would feel. I don't, <laughs> I don't, 
I think I'd rather just sleep in. I think I'm just gonna sleep in tomorrow and skip out on yoga class and give myself some rest. Even though yoga really does help me, I'll just go on Sunday instead. Uh, but tomorrow is a new day and I'm feeling hopeful. I am purging, I am releasing to receive, I am purging, I am purging, I'm purging. This is part of this new life that I'm entering. And you have to let feelings come to the surface, otherwise it'll follow with you. It'll follow you everywhere you go. Step one of recovering, having a meltdown, letting it all out, feeling all the feels, opening up, being honest to yourself, you know, that whole thing. I'm okay, I, it's just a moment. It's just a moment. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. I'll see you tomorrow.